What's up, guys? It's your boy John Showtime. Showtime's Fight Phone. We talk all things fights. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment with my boy Josh Vaez. And we're ready to talk some boxing. All right, we're ready to get these hands. Let's get to it. Now, it has officially been announced Devin Haney is going to be fighting Ryan Garcia. How do you feel about this fight? I feel great. I think this is a fight that everyone wants to see. I think this is a fight that um, is going to be super competitive. And the way that it's all hyped up right now, these guys know each other from the amateurs, fought each other six times. It's even prime of their careers, um, super prime of their careers. If you really think about it, you know, yep. prime could be 28, but now these guys are both 23, 24 respectively. So um, belt is on the line. This is what you love to see. So I'm all for it. I was sitting back thinking about when this fight got made and I was just like, this is exactly if Oscar De La Hoya and Floyd Mayweather fought five years before they did, right? Floyd and Oscar fought, you know, in their thirties, right? 30, I think Floyd was 30. Oscar yeah. De La Hoya was like mid thirties, like 34, 33, right? Imagine those fighters fighting each other for a title at 24, 25, when it wasn't Money Mayweather, it was still full-blown pretty boy Floyd going against Oscar De La Hoya. So um, for me overall, I love this fight. Uh, it's not too early. Why not give the fans yeah, never too early? Now. And these guys have been jawing each other at a, for a while now. Um, so it's at the point where I think that we're ready just to see them fight. So my biggest thing is I, we have to like, really start one respecting and like applauding ryan garcia like there is not a single fighter in boxing that you can say is genuinely trying to find and making the toughest fights he can like more than ryan garcia ryan garcia is not a punk he has so much confidence in himself and he's not all talk like people want to bash him for like pulling out on jojo diaz because he pulled out for mental health saying he's not about that life, but then went and fought probably, not probably, the scariest man in the division in Tank. And now going against somebody who can just embarrass you flat out in Devin Haney, and who just had a phenomenal, great performance as well. He didn't, I mean, yeah, he got, I guess you could say he had a tune-up fight, but who cares? He had a tune-up fight, and he very well should have, and probably could have just fought Roley and get more of a hype and then go into Devin Haney. But no, he went right into it and fought Devin Haney. So one, I just got to say, respect to, to Ryan. He, we got to start, stop calling him a YouTube boxer, this, all this, uh, that, and a third, because he's about all the life that he says. He's not the most fundamentally sound, but at least he's daring to be great. And I respect that so much. And we need that in boxing. As boxing fans, we need all the fighters to act like this. Um, but as far as Ryan, like you said before, they have history. That's the biggest thing to me. They fought many a times in amateurs. And granted, people say, well, that happened in the amateurs. Sure, it did happen in amateurs. But if you don't think, we're, you got to remember, these guys are human. And if you face somebody before, it doesn't matter if they were 10, 15, 30. If you fight them again or you're wrestling them again or you're competing with them again, you're always going to remember what happened when you competed with them last time. Like whether you won, you lost, and they both lost to each other three times. And as I recall, they both got not stoppages, but I think they both got eight counts. Um, but while in their amateur matches as well, which means they got hurt enough for the referee to say, oh, let me give you a count. Mm -hmm. So there's enough competitiveness between them. I, I, like you said, they're both in their prime. The um, we, we, There's no hydration clause, so there's no excuses when it comes to that. I mean, it's everything that you want as a boxing fan. And I can't wait to see it happens. I mean, I say see it when it happens. And I think it's going to be more competitive than what people think. Just for the simple fact that I'm, I know Ryan's going to be more confident in this fight versus Devin because he has beaten him before. He probably doesn't respect his power still. And I mean, he just has confidence in his all his own power. This is his third fight in this new, well, hold on, is this his second fight in uh, Jack's gym? Third fight. Uh, second. Second, so it's his second fight in, in Jack's gym. So like, once again, it's just more comfortability being there um, with the style that, uh, so hopefully he does no Philly shell. We don't, we don't want to see that. Retire it, because if you do, you will lose. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited. It's gonna be a good fight. Yeah, I think this is a great fight. Um, it's going to be highly competitive. Two big egos, so no one wants to lose, right? Um, both of these fighters have a lot to fight for as far as pride is concerned. So we'll see what happens. We love to see two young kings going at it. Um, this is what we wanted, right? This is the four kings exactly. all over again fighting each other. So what more can you ask for if you're a boxing fan? So my question for you, though, let's say Ryan loses again. 
whether it's stoppage or, you know, he just gets flat out dominated. Do you think he fights again? 100%. I don't think he goes out uh, as a loser in any way, shape, or form. Like I said, these are guys with two huge egos. Ryan is too prideful to, to go out on a losing end at this early in his career. Do I think that a win like this has him maybe put boxing to the side just a little bit to pursue maybe uh, more commercialized endorsements and, and acting and things like that? Yes, 100%. But do I think that was going to happen anyways? Even if you <laughs> yes, 100%. So, yes, he's, he's um, made it clear. Yeah, I would say that's one thing. He's made it clear in his career that he wants to retire early, one. And then two, he wants to pursue, like you said, acting. He wants to direct. He wants to be able to do. He wants to do all this extra stuff outside. And realistically, he's, he's more likely going to be able to do it. He's probably, I, I don't know about movies and acting, but he's going to be a content creator. He's going to be one of the, he's going to be like a Jake Paul. That's probably what's going to end up being yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's already a California kid, right? So he's he's in the mix as far as entertainment business goes. So um, I think a fight with Devin Haney, I mean, is great for him. He wins. It boosts him to the stardom that it could have boosted him if he would have beaten Tank. Um, so excited to see what happens. It's going to be a great fight. I know the, the build up. It's going to be crazy. It already has been crazy with them going to, you know, shoving each other uh, at the Super Bowl. So. What, what did you think about that? So my thing, like, what do you, what, how do you feel about, like, when the fighters do stuff like that? Because I always had an opinion of like, it's. I always think it's like it's staged. Not necessarily like I text you like, hey, we're gonna do this. More so of like, I'm not really trying to fight you. Like, we just try to hype the fight up. The only time I've ever been, like, super shocked was, like, the John Jones in D.C. And they just legit fought. Like, that was an actual... Or, or like, when Mike Tyson, I forgot who he fought, uh, like, during a presser or whatever. And they were trying to hype the fight up. But also, Mike Tyson's crazy, so we got to exclude that. Yeah, John Jones is also crazy, so never mind. Those are just the those are just the extreme odds. Those are both <laughs> psychotic people. But normal people, yeah, they just normally just do it. So I want to know, what do you think about the, the, this hype up that they wanted to do in the Super Bowl weekend? I love it. This is exactly what we want to see as fans, right? We don't want, you know, quiet, friendly. We we see you all going in as gladiators, right? Where I like to draw the line, however, is the pushing and shoving. We totally, hey, verbal jabs all day. Go for it. Um, we love to see it. It's led to some of the best interviews, the best snippets of, you know, YouTube videos you can think of, right? However, I just think that you know, pushing leads to shoving, which leads to injury, which leads to prolonging the fight. And that's what we don't want, right? Yeah. Um, we saw it in Creed, right? Buddy got Creed too. He got knocked out, fight got postponed. Now we got this guy from jail in the mix, right? So yeah. same here, same thing here. I, I'm fine with the verbal jabs, but as far as the pushing and shoving, let's, let's save that for the ring. Um, that's what you're gonna get paid millions for. And we don't wanna prolong it because someone Push someone into somebody and next thing you know, injury. I feel you. I feel you. Well, you know, like I said, man, I'm excited for this fight. Can't wait to see it. That's all I have. You have any other notes or anything you want to talk about when it comes to the Devin Haney or Ryan Garcia? Uh, just make sure you tune in and actually buy the fight. I think these two fighters deserve it. Yeah. Uh, also, so so we'll nah, we'll, we'll, we can do predictions when we get closer to the fight. And um, yeah, I'm excited though. But like I said, as always, guys, man, make sure you follow me on social media at Papa Showtime, Josh Showtime, whichever one you find me at. And Josh, where can they find you? Yeah, absolutely. On X at First Class Bias. On you Instagram. say X? What a weirdo. <laughs> hey, just trying to stay up with the new kids. I know. <laughs> Instagram at First Class underscore Bias. All right, bet. As always, man, make sure y'all stay breezy and always be blessed, man.